Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I am Aisha Ibrahim. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received the first Deputy Chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, Chairman of the General Sports Authority and President of Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa at Safriya Palace, who was accompanied by the GSA Board of Directors members. His Highness handed His Majesty the annual report of the GSA 2022 that included the sports achievements made by the Kingdom as well as the current and upcoming projects. The report also included the programs and initiatives launched by His Highness to develop the sports system of the Kingdom, which follows the directives of His Majesty the King to enhance the sports march, as well as highlighting the most prominent achievements made by Bahraini sports last year. His Majesty expressed thanks and appreciation to His Highness Sheikh Khalid for his dedicated work to serve the youth and sports sector and for the number of initiatives launched to develop the sector. His Majesty praised His Highness's keenness to support young talents and improve their skills to raise the status of the kingdom in all sporting events, which Bahrain made many achievements thanks to its people. His Majesty praised every single sport achievement that contributed to raising the status of the kingdom on the regional and international levels. His Majesty also praised the unity of the Bahraini sport family and its support to the plans and programs of the GSA, which achieved remarkable achievements to Bahraini sports. His Majesty wished His Highness Sheikh Khalid and all Bahraini youth continued success and further achievements in serving their country. His Highness expressed thanks and appreciation to His Majesty the King for his unlimited support to the sports movement in the Kingdom, which resulted in a number of accomplishments and raised the status of the Kingdom in all fields. His Highness praised His Majesty's reception and handed His Majesty the annual report of the GSA, which included the initiatives and programs that were launched to develop the sports system in the Kingdom which followed the directives of His Majesty the King to elevate the sports march, which resulted in making numerous achievements. His Highness said that his reception is a source of pride for all members of the GSA and will be a motivation to make further accomplishments. He affirmed keenness to enhance the achievements in various regional, continental and international levels. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received at Safriya Palace the GCC Secretary General Jasim Mohammed Libdewi, who is currently visiting the country on the occasion of his appointment as GCC Secretary General. His Majesty welcomed the guest, congratulating him on his appointment and wishing him and all the Secretary, Secretariat staff success to announce the joint GCC action system and achieve its goals towards further cooperation and coordination between GCC countries and fulfilling the aspirations of its people for progress, development and prosperity. His Majesty hailed the GCC high status at regional and international levels and the leading achievements made by its countries at all levels since the beginning of its march as well as its effective efforts in consolidating the pillars of peace, security and stability in the region. The two sides also discussed topics on Gulf affairs. The GCC Secretary General expressed thanks and appreciation to His Majesty the King for his continuous support to joint a Gulf action, affirming the continuity of efforts to develop the Gulf Cooperation March and fulfill the aspirations of their Majesties and Highnesses, the GCC leaders. His Majesty the King's representative for humanitarian work in youth affairs, honorary president of the Bahrain Royal Equestrian and Endurance Federation, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, directed to allocate three cars as prizes for the spectators of His Highness's show jumping championship, which will be held next Saturday. His Highness also directed to allocate 10,000 Bahraini dinars to the championship's first place winners and there will be more awards for His Highness's endurance race which will be held on March 18th. These directives come within the framework of His Highness's keenness to continue to develop equestrian sports in Bahrain in line with the directives of His Majesty the King. His Highness affirmed that allocating these prizes comes within this approach and the continuous keenness to support and encourage owners, stables and riders participating in the show jumping championships to achieve the best and highest positions and ranks for the kingdom in international championships and competitions. 
He added that Bahrain riders achieved outstanding levels during the current season and in external participations. His Majesty's Representative for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs and Chairman of the Oil and Gas Holding Company, Noga Holding, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, addressed the world's energy leaders in a keynote speech at ESERA Week 2023 by SNB Global, where he spoke about Bahrain's energy transition and the future of global energy. During the plenary session titled Accelerating the Energy Transition, His Highness shared Bahrain's outlook for the industry and its efforts to directly invest in and accelerate the energy sector's transition, which is in line with the vision of His Majesty the King and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister to secure Bahrain's energy needs for decades to come and to achieve a nation's COP26 and net zero targets. His Highness Sheikh Nasser recognized the challenges facing the kingdom and other global nations, adding that domestic gas resources are becoming increasingly costly and challenging to extract, and there is still significant potential in the oil and gas sector. His Highness stated that Bahrain will be a leading nation in Arab Gulf region to generate a significant portion of its electricity from renewable resources in the future, adding that meeting net zero targets require the acceleration of energy transition efforts. He stated that Noga Holding is committed to working with the wide partners across the public and private sectors to expedite the adoption of new technologies and infrastructure. His Highness affirmed Bahrain's plans to significantly increase domestic energy efficiency through new infrastructure requirements at both the consumer and commercial levels, including district cooling for new developments. Thank you. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished delegates, it is an honor to be here at Sierra Week, hearing about exciting developments and innovation from the world's energy leaders. On behalf of the delegation from the Kingdom of Bahrain, we thank you for the opportunity to address this important and influential audience. The oil and gas industry in the Arabian Gulf was born in Bahrain when oil was discovered in 1932. The discovery coincided with the collapse of the global pearl market a bedrock for our economy in the early 20th century. But we preserved, we innovated, and we collaborated to create a new industry that has brought prosperity to our people. We set up partnership with an American multinational in its first exploration venture outside the United States, which became a catalyst for economic development in the region. This past year, all of us have been reminded of the fragility of global systems. The energy landscape, which had already been rattled by a pandemic, has been confronted with the geopolitical events and economic uncertainty. While simultaneously needing to respond to a warming planet that is hurting the world's most vulnerable communities. But Bahrain is resilient and knows how to respond to global market shifts. In COP26, His Highness Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the Crown Prince and Prime Minister made a commitment to a global audience that Bahrain would achieve net zero by 2060, reduce emissions by 30% through decarbonization and efficiency initiatives by 2035, and double our deployments of renewables. These targets are faced with a unique challenge. Bahrain's energy intensive industrial sector, our energy consumption intensity is two and a half times the global average due to the success of our world-class aluminum smelter and the Babco refinery. To put it in perspective, the impact of our heavy industrialization in Bahrain would be equivalent to placing 600 smelters in the US. We have a responsibility towards our citizens to ensure we are led by the guiding principles of sustainability, affordability, and security of supply, which are enshrined in Bahrain's economic vision 2030 and drive the change we are embarking on. 
our CO2 targets require us to embark on a complex and sophisticated journey of decarbonization. Furthermore, our domestic gas resources are becoming increasingly challenging and costly to extract while demand continues to grow. This is our reality today. But over 90 years, since the birth of our oil and gas industry, Noga Holding remains ambitious in our vision for the energy landscape and accelerating the energy transition. Today, we recognize the need to transition our energy supply, be it to meet our climate action targets or to ensure our nation's energy security with diminishing natural resources and a volatile energy market. Bahrain will be a leading country in the Gulf region in the shift to generate most of its electricity from renewables. I will repeat that again. Bahrain will be a leading country in the Gulf region in the shift to generate most of its electricity from renewables. Over the next three years, we will accelerate our energy transition efforts. Our plans will, our plans will leverage three main levers that will simultaneously achieve our climate commitments, transform our energy sector, optimization of demand, a flexible power mix, and the sustainable growth of our economy, we can transform our energy sector. Starting this year, we will significantly increase domestic energy efficiency through updated building codes and requirements, such as district cooling for new developments and introducing possible incentives to enable a growing penetration of hybrid and electric vehicles. In 2024, we will begin to ramp up the diversification of our energy mix by starting the build of a renewable energy base by 2040. That could be almost equal to our total demand for power today. We are planning to increase the interconnection capacity with our regional neighbors to import cleaner sources of energy. And finally, we are looking to decarbonize our hard abate industries like aluminum, steel, and oil refining through a world-scale carbon capture storage project that is currently in the feasibility stage. Our national energy strategy also powers the ongoing development of our oil and gas sector responsibility and sustainability. Cooperation and the exchange of expertise are central to our plans and throughout discussions with all the new partners, we have found a great appetite for collaboration. We are actively working to de-risk some of our most promising, promising oil and gas prospects offshore through a 3D seismic program beginning next year, but I'm pushing for Q3 this year. We recently discovered two new natural gas reservoirs in the kingdom under our existing gas fields in the Aljuba and Aljof layers. Testing and drilling will continue throughout the year as we seek to expand our natural resources. To continue to expand our capabilities, we recognize that we must have access to the most up-to-date, accurate, and reliable data. We have put in place partnerships that will enable us to deploy and better integrate artificial intelligence, state-of-the-art satellite services, and digital solutions to monitor emissions. We are in the final stages of the $7 billion Babco modernization program as well. Our existing refinery, which is over 90 years old, will be upgraded into world-class top quartile refinery with reduced carbon and energy intensity. The refinery, once completed in 2024, will be one of the most efficient, complex, and modern refineries in the region. We are so excited about the opportunities this investment will bring to the kingdom. These are just a few examples of opportunities for partnerships in Bahrain. As we chart our future for the Kingdom of Bahrain, finding and working with the right partners across the public and private sectors is essential. By joining forces, we can accelerate our adoption of new technologies, encourage innovation, and advance our infrastructure. As you can see, we have a clear vision for the future. We have no doubt that Bahrain is ready to demonstrate that the region can deliver a resilient, successful, and commercially viable energy transition, despite its harsh natural environment. From high temperature to water scarcity, 
we find ourselves right in the middle of the impact of the water food energy nexus. However, we are confident in inspiring other countries to follow our lead. As we look as an ahead to COP28, justice must be at the heart of our actions and intentions. As we seek to eradicate energy poverty by balancing energy security with environmental sustainability, the region will undoubtedly rally behind our brothers. Bahrain will be there alongside our neighbors and partners to ensure that it, uh, it is a COP to remember and the region emerges as the, a leader in energy transition. Once again, thank you. And we are excited about the opportunities ahead. There is huge potential for continued development of the sector. This year's agenda is very impressive. And we have no doubt that the conversations, discussions, and outcomes from Sarah Week 2023 will not only be intelligent and nuanced, but they will be shaping the future of global energy. We look forward to sharing perspectives and exchanging expertise so we can shape the future of global energy together. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. The Representatives Council held its weekly meeting chaired by its speaker, Ahmed Limsalem. The council approved a number of proposals, including the issuance of a ration card that grants a 50% discount on essential commodities, in addition to the government's urgent consideration of the issues of the Ministry of Labor's closing a large number of un unemployment files and reviewing the mechanism followed by the ministry in this regard. The council also approved the formation of a parliamentary investigation committee on food security in Bahrain and a draft law ratifying the main system of the International Days Council. Under the patronage of Attorney General Dr. Ali bin Fadl al buaini and organized by the Public Prosecution and the International Group of Artificial Intelligence in cooperation with the Judicial and Legal Studies Institute and the Nasser Artificial Intelligence Research and Development Center, the second Bahrain International Conference titled The Uses of Artificial Intelligence in Judicial and Justice Services was launched remotely. The Attorney General delivered a speech in which he stressed that the use of AI technologies in the judicial and justice fields is the latest way to develop judicial work and enhance capabilities in judicial and administrative work. The head of the International Group for AI and AI Consultant at the Nasser AI Research and Development Center, Dr. Jasim Hadji, indicated that Bahrain ranked 56th out of 181 countries and ranked 5th among the GCC countries, according to Oxford Insight. Uh, we are pleased and honored today to participate in this conference under the sponsorship of His Excellency, uh, the Attorney General, uh, Dr. Ali bin Fadl al -Buainin. Uh, the convening of this conference indicates the solidarity of all national agencies and um, institutions to implement the Kingdom's vision uh, by making digital a transformation a work methodology for the future of the Kingdom of Bahrain. The sponsorship of His Excellency, the Attorney General Dr. Ali bin Fadl al buainin of this international conference comes within the public prosecution strategy relating to digital transformation and technological progress. This uh, strategy indeed stems from the, belief to, uh, from the belief in the need to keep pace with recent changes, as well as to enhance the capabilities of both employees and members of the public prosecution in an effort to make use of AI in the judicial field. The conference is to be held for two days and uh, includes a group of local and international speakers with experience in the field of artificial intelligence. Um, whereas this is uh, the second conference of its kind in the, in the Middle East, as a successor of the first conference held in the United Arab Emirates. Um, I must say that uh, this international conference is a reflection of the, of the Attorney General interest in developing the judicial work system and uh, catching up with technological development and, uh, and applying the latest technologies that are in the interest of the work of the public prosecution and the, judici the judiciary. Uh, right now, uh, the public prosecution is drafting a guide 
with ethical principles and uh, general frameworks for activating artificial intelligence, uh, in addition to the formation of a specialized team of prosecutors concerned with activating these applications in the work of uh, public prosecution. Foreign Minister Dr. Abdel Latif bin Rashid Al Zayani received today a new GCC Secretary General, Jasim Mohammed Libdewi, and congratulated him on his appointment, wishing him every success in accomplishing his duties. Libdewi pledged to continue efforts to further the GCC march towards achieving Gulf leaders' aspirations to support cooperation between member states. During the meeting, the two sides discussed the Gulf issues and ways of furthering economic and social cooperation to bolster the GCC status regionally and internationally. He expressed pride in the confidence of their majesties and highnesses, the leaders of the GCC countries, to appoint him as the Secretary General of the GCC Council, stressing his determination to exert more efforts to enhance a joint Gulf cooperation towards achieving the GCC leaders' aspirations of further integration and coordination. He also lauded the vital and constructive role of the Kingdom of Bahrain in boosting joint Gulf action, wishing Bahrain further development and prosperity. The meeting also tackled means of GCC cooperation development as well as bolstering economic and social achievements for the benefit of the citizens of the GCC countries and to strengthen the status of the Gulf regionally and internationally. The Minister of Justice, Islamic Affairs and Endowments, Nawaf Lim'auda, issued a decision regarding the adoption of e-services for the submission of regulations, documents, notes and judicial requests. The Minister also issued a decision on the organization of the declaration by electronic means, whereby the plaintiff may declare when informing the civil suit for damages arising from an offense for which a criminal order was issued. The Ministry of Tourism of the Bahrain Tourism Authority, BTA, took part in the International Tourism Exhibition in Berlin, ITB Berlin, being held in the German capital from 7 to 9 March. The Ministry and BTA are participating with a special pavilion alongside 12 participants from the most prominent Bahraini hotels and destination management companies, along with tourism border tour operators, providers, airlines and car rental companies around the world. Tourism Minister Fatima bin Jafar al sayrifi participated in a panel discussion entitled Minister's Roundtable, alongside Egypt's Minister of Tourism, Ahmed Isa, Georgian Deputy Minister of Economy and Sustainable Development, Mariam Kveri Vish Elvili, and Croatian Minister of Tourism and Sports, Nikolina Prenjak. Al Sayrafi affirmed that the Bahraini participation in the International Tourism Exhibition in Berlin, ITB Berlin, comes within the framework of the ministry's keenness to invest in major international tourism events to promote the tourism sector, attract more tourists and visitors to the kingdom, and continue achieving the ambitious goals of the tourism strategy 2022-2026. She highlighted keenness to introduce the various tourist destinations in Bahrain and to activities of the upcoming tourism season, including Formula One, the food festival, and various attractive offers provided by the private tourism sector establishments to individuals and group tourists. Permanent representative of the Kingdom of Bahrain to the United Nations and New York Ambassador Jamal Faris al rawai delivered Bahrain's speech before the 5th United Nations Conference on the least developed countries themed from potential to prosperity. Addressing the gathering, al rawai stressed Bahrain's constant keenness under the leadership of His Majesty the King and the directives of the government headed by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister to consolidate a partnership with the United Nations and support supported in achieving sustainable development goals, especially in the least developed countries. He also noted the success of joint efforts in supporting the least developed countries requires the international community to adhere to its commitment to provide developed assistance, open markets to its experts without custom duties, reduce debt burdens and encourage investments in a way that enhances the optimal utilization of its natural and human resources to achieve development goals. 
The permanent representative expressed the kingdom's belief in the importance of cooperation with the least developed countries as Bahrain has initiated a number of joint cooperation projects in a number of countries. He added that the kingdom also encourages and supports the private sector for foreign investment and the establishment of projects that benefit peoples and societies in least developed countries. He affirmed that Bahrain was able to provide medical, humanitarian assistance and establish health, educational and relief development projects in many developed countries and other friendly countries affected by the repercussions of wars, conflicts or natural disasters. He further pointed out that the kingdom continues to stimulate international humanitarian action by launching global initiatives and awards to serve humanity, empower youth and women to achieve sustainable development goals, support dialogue and a peaceful coexistence, boost the uses of information and communication technologies in the field of education, in addition to its readiness to host meetings of the General Assembly of the Inter-Parliamentary Union. He added that the kingdom is keen to establish open and balanced economic relations with various countries of the world. In light of its leadership in the list of countries in the Middle East region and many indicators of economic freedom and the transfer of its pioneering experience in entrepreneurship to more than 48 countries in partnership with UNIDO. Member of the United Nations General Assembly and Chairman of the 61st Session, Sheikh Hayya bint Rashid Al Khalifa affirmed the importance of holding the UNCPGA meeting in the Kingdom of Bahrain following the invitation of His Majesty the King. She praised the role of such meeting in highlighting the important role of the UN, especially in the field of human rights, equality, social justice and joint international action. She praised the meeting of the UNCPGA members with His Majesty the King, which reflects His Majesty's interest in various world issues, such as a global peace and enhancing human rights. She added that the meeting discussed cyber security, cyber crimes, and how to combat them in order to achieve the desired goals. Sheikh Haya added that the meeting included discussions regarding international peace and security, the Ukrainian crisis, as well as the members' appreciation of the kingdom's hosting of the meeting. She affirmed the support the meeting received from His Majesty the King, which reflects the values and culture of the Kingdom of Bahrain that is based on peaceful coexistence. Having this council me meeting in Bahrain, it, it is a sign that Bahrain is acknowledged what the United Nations did for the humanity. We have to work together and we need your ex expertise in this field. So every, every one of us, he has different experience with the member states. We were joined earlier over the phone by Brussels by European Affairs uh, Senior Director Mr. Vlad Oletino, who spoke about the importance of hosting the meeting in the Kingdom of Bahrain very important meeting and uh, his majesty king's invite was very very kind and came at the very right moment you basically had there the un secretary general you also had there former presidents uh, of the uh, of the un of the united nations you also had there very important leaders uh, of the world discussing uh, the topics which are very very actual also you know cyber security combating cyber crime uh, we also heard about discussing the pluralism and international cooperation and as well advancing the goals of the United Nations and making the United Nations ready to meet the challenges of the 21st century. Uh, the, 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 the place in which that was discussed is very important and I think that also marks very clearly Bahrain's role into the international community, which is a very, very important and very respected uh, role. The Labour Market's Regulatory Authority, LMRA, conducted two joint inspection campaigns in the Northern and the Southern Governorates on a number of shops and work sites. LMRA noted that a joint inspection campaign was conducted in the Northern Governorate in coordination with the Nationality Passports and Residence Affairs and the Governorate's respective Police Directorate. The other inspection campaign was undertaken in the Southern Governorate in coordination with the General Directorate of Crime Detection and Forensic Evidence of the Ministry of Interior. The campaigns resulted in reporting violations uh, related to the labor market and residency laws. The cases were referred for legal action.